you are great and great yes. to be praised. Yes. And God, we just thank you, Lord God, for all your wonderful work. God, we had 10,000 tongues. We couldn't thank you. We couldn't thank you enough, God, for you have been so good to us, God. We thank you, Lord God, for this day that you've blessed us with, Lord God, for waking us up this morning, Lord God, for starting us on our way, God. We just want to say thank you, God. God, we thank you because you tell us in your word and all things in every season we should give thanks, Lord God. So, God, we thank you, Lord God, Lord God, for being God in our lives, Lord God. Lord, even if we can't find, look around us and find reasons to be thankful, Lord, just take our minds back, Lord God, to how you've just been so good to us, Lord God. God, we thank you, Lord God, because you are able. We thank you for being the great I am, Lord God, for being everything that we need. So, God, we just thank you, Lord God. We come with hearts of thanksgiving, Lord God, for the word that you have for us on today, Lord God. God, I pray that you move me out the way, God. God, and speak a word to your people, Lord God. God, a word that will save someone, a word that will heal someone, a word that will deliver somebody. Lord, a word that will let us know that this is the acceptable time and that you're blessing us even now. Lord God, if you do these things for us, we be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we count it done. Amen. Amen. Now, I need somebody to bless God in this place. Hallelujah. Bless God like you know he's God. Bless God like he's been good to you. Bless God like he's been keeping you. Bless God like he's been making a way for you, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, God. We just lift you up on today, Lord God. Lord God, because you've been so good to us, Lord God. God, we just bless you on today, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I don't know about y'all, but I'm just excited about God. Amen. I'm excited about God because he's so good. He's so good and he's so kind. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God for the blessing. He woke us up this morning, y'all. Hallelujah. Sometimes we think it's the alarm clock that got us up. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory, God. We give glory to our un and honor to our Heavenly Father. It's in him that we live, move, and have our very being. Amen. To our, our evangelists, evangelist homes, all the ministers, Lord God, to our officers, to our mothers, to all of you, God's children. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you this morning for each and every one of you. Glory to God. Glory. We just thank God for his grace and his mercy on today. Amen. We are excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. 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 And God has just been so good to us. He's been so good and he's been so kind. Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we have to stop and remind ourselves just how good he's been. Sometimes we just have to stop and and even when we can't think about it, think about a reason, we just have to stop and tell God, thank you. Amen. Amen. Because it's when we stop and tell God, thank you. When we start thanking God, we start thanking God. You know, uh, we start appreciating him for who he is. That might stir up some in you to, to realize how great God is and how he can work some stuff out for you that you can't work out for yourself. Amen. Amen. God, God, not like everybody else. Everybody else, you know, you have to be good to them or this or that. They'll turn their back on you. They'll talk about you. They'll, you, you, you just don't know. But God always has your back. God always got your back. He's going to always love you. He's going to love you for you. He's just going to love you for you. He's going to love you through some stuff. Amen. Amen. So we just thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We truly thank God on today. Amen. 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 Look, if you will, if you will, if you have your Bibles with you, look, we're excited about um, in, in um, this month of September in Bible study we're and in, in preaching and in everything. We're looking in the book of James. 
We're going through the book of James. We're going through the book of James in our Bible study. We'll be going through the book of James in our sermon series. We're just going through the book of James, and we're looking at how James is teaching us how to overcome, how to overcome trials, how to overcome temptations, how to overcome, and how to be an overcomer according to the word of God. Amen. Amen. And we're, we're t- today we're, we're coming from James, the, the first chapter. James chapter 1, amen. We want to look at verse 22. James chapter 1, verse number 22. Amen. Very familiar passage of scripture. James chapter 1, verse 22. Amen. And the word of God reads, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Let me read that again. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Amen, amen. This morning, this morning, we want to come from the thought, how to handle the word. How to handle the word. How to handle the word. Amen. Now, how to handle the word. Now, sometimes we, we in our in our vernacular, vernacular and how we use words, we say when we think about handling something, we got to be careful that we're all on the right page with handling. Because you could say you're going to handle somebody, that means you're going to straighten somebody out, right? That's not what we're talking about here. We ain't talking about handling the word like we're going to straighten the word out. No, 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 we're not handling the word like this, but in the sense of how to, to be a doer of the word being a doer of the word so God has given us his word and we need to know how to correctly handle the word we need to know how to correctly um, be a performer an actor uh, to 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 an executor an accomplisher of the word that God has given us right we need to know how to do that now why is that so important why is that so important? Well, now, what is your view of the word of God? Amen. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is, 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 is inspired by God. It's the breathed word of God. In it, and it's good for correction, for reproof, for teach, training in righteousness, yeah. right? That's what the word of that's what the Bible says about. So it's in the inspired word of God. We know that man wrote the word of God. Um, all the authors of this book were, were human, in fact. But every word here has been inspired by God. Amen. You can't read through the Bible and see all the connections and how everything is working out in the Bible and not know that there there's a higher source who put this this book together. Amen. This is the word of God. And now the word of God is not just uh, words on a page. Uh It's not just words on your screen. If you're looking at it on your phone, the word of God is so much more than that. It's not like a book that we pick off the shelf and we read. The word of God is living. The word of God is breathing. You can pull a book off the shelf and, and, and that book is not alive. 
It, it has no life in it. But the word of God has life in it. It is living and it's breathing. And not only does it have life, but it has power. There is power in the word, the capital W, the word of God. Because in the gospel of John, it starts out by saying in the beginning was the word. Right. And the word was with God and the word was God. Amen. You go down a few verses. It says that the word became flesh. And we understand that the word dwelt among men. It's talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And, and we got to understand that Jesus, when he came down and he took flesh upon flesh and he lived his life. Right. Jesus is the in essence, every scripture that we read in the Bible should point to Jesus and does point to Jesus. And we know that Jesus is alive and well. He's sitting at the right hand of the father serving as our mediator. So the word of God that we're reading is Jesus Christ. We're reading about the life of Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, you're reading about the prophecies and, and everything about everything points to Jesus Christ. From Genesis to Revelations, from the beginning, because uh, uh, God said, let us in creation. He said, let us. He was talking about him, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They all work together from the very beginning and not only from the beginning but they are the beginning they were here before everything was put in place they were creating they created it all they're the beginning and the end so this word this word that you're reading you're not just reading scriptures you're not just reading sentences you're reading a uh, uh, life the word of God brings life. The word of God has power. The word of God uh, has everything that's wrapped up in Jesus. And Jesus, 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 the name that's above all names. He's been giving authority in heaven and in earth. Look, Jesus, Jesus is the word. And when we read this word, we're reading about the power. We're, we, and access, in essence, we have access to the power of God. So we need to understand how to handle this word that God has given us. Yeah, yeah. Why do we need to know how to handle it, how to correctly handle it? Because there's power in the word. Yeah. There's power in the word. There's power in the word. When you read these scriptures, it speaks to your life. When you believe by faith the words that are here, it works in your life. Everything that you, every question that you have. Every experience that you go through, every trial, every temptation, every problem, you can find it all here in the word of God. You can find it in the word of God. There's excitement, there's adventure, there's all kinds of stuff in the word of God. It's all in the word and there's power in it so that when we speak the word, when we apply the scriptures to our lives, uh, uh, we have access to the power of God. So we need to know how to handle this word. We need to know how to handle the word correctly. Now, look, you can you can handle it, but you got to know how to handle it correctly. I could give look someone if someone walked in here and gave you a million dollars. Everybody here got them. Everybody would use it probably differently. You need to know how to use that million dollars correctly because you could go off and just spend it all and not have anything. Or you could know if you know how to correctly handle it, it can be a legacy for you, your children, your children's children and, and for generations to come. If you know how to handle it correctly. My grandparents knew how to handle a dollar correctly, I guess. They didn't have too much. But they were able to feed all their children. Amen. They were able to take care of them, Amen. provide food, shelter, Amen. clothing, Amen. getting to. You have to know how to handle what you have, Amen. whether it's a little bit or a lot. Yeah. You got to know how to handle it. Yeah. And so God, in his loving kindness, gave us Jesus. Yeah. He gave us Jesus. Yeah. And we need to know how to correctly handle to be a doer of the word, to make the word work for you in your life, 
to speak life into your situation, to speak life so you can have encouragement, so you can be blessed, right? Blessed. The Bible says the one who walks in the counsel of the Lord is blessed, right? So how do we handle correctly this word? Now, there's a song that says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Right? Following Jesus. Following Jesus is an action, isn't it? If you follow someone, if they move this way, you move that way. If they go to the left, you go to the left. If they go to the right, you go to the right. If they go up some stairs, you go up the stairs. If they go out the door, you got to go out the door. If they crawl on the floor, you crawl on the floor too. If you're following, there's a specific action that goes along with it. Following means that you're not going your way. You're going whichever the way the person. And so if you say, I have decided, keyword decided, to follow Jesus, that must mean there's a specific action that's taking place, right? A, 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 an action that means when he goes, I go. Now, how do we know where Jesus is going? We don't see him with our eyes. You don't see Jesus walking around now in the flesh. You don't see it. So how do I know? God has given us his word. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms, the word is a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. Yeah, the yeah. word of God will show you which way Amen. to go. In Amen. your darkest times, yeah. the word of God can lead you through. Yeah. He can lead you through those dark times, Amen. the troubles and the trials. The word of God can do that. Yeah. But we got to know how to handle the word. Amen. We got to know how to handle the word. Why is the word of God so important? Look, God, the Bible tells us, James tells us here that we need to be doers of the word yeah. and not hearers only. Amen. Right? Yeah. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. Mm -hmm. Deceiving your own selves. Yeah. So break that down. But means there's a change from what was spoken of before. It says, be doers of the word. In other words, do what the word says. Amen. Right? Amen. Action. Yeah. Don't just hear it. Mm -hmm. You got to perform that which you've heard. Amen. He says, because if you only hear the word and you don't do the word, yeah. he says, you're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. In the morning, probably before you came to church, you, you got up and you went and looked in the mirror. Right? And you looked in the mirror and you saw what you needed to do. Right? You saw you needed to wash your face and, and everything else. You, you saw if there was anything in your eyes so you can make sure you get all the crust out your eyes or, or anything else. If you, if you had a real good sleep, you might have a little dribble coming down that dried off. You had to see what you needed to wipe off. So you looked in the mirror. You had to see what you needed to do to your hair. If you, you comb in your hair, you had to look in there and see if you missed something. Ladies, you look in the mirror if you're putting your makeup and all this other stuff on. You want to make sure that you're putting it on correctly, that you did Get something out of place that you got every spot. You're greasing your face up. You want to make sure you didn't leave anything unattended so you won't have ashes, ashes spots on your face, right? So you, were, you, you looked in the mirror to see what was going on. Now, have you ever looked in the mirror? You were in such a rush. You looked in the mirror and said, I'll straighten that out a little bit later. And, and as you were going about your day, you forgot to straighten out what you thought you had to straighten out, right? And so you had to go back and look in the mirror or whatever, right? And so here, James is saying, Look, when you're just a hearer of the word and not a doer, you're deceiving yourself. Yeah, yeah. Just like a person, when you see man here is, 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 is uh, talking about both genders, man and woman. Uh, when, when, when you look, just like a person looks into the, to a, a mirror and they look at their face. They look at themselves and then after looking at themselves, they go their way and then they start forgetting 
what they look like. They start forgetting what they saw. They forget what manner of man. That's why you keep looking in the mirror. You want to keep looking in the mirror. So he says, don't be just a hearer of the word, because if you just hear it and don't do it, you're going to forget what you read, what you heard, I mean. Whether it was reading or, or hearing, you got to do it. He says, because if you look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein, and don't be a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So if you want to be blessed, if you start at verse 25 and go backwards, James said, this man shall be blessed. In his deed, in his work, whatever he's doing, this man shall be blessed. Now, you got to understand, blessed here is not just talking about material stuff. Blessed, the blessings that God um, gives us are far greater than just the materialistic Amen. stuff. Because he can give you all the money in the world, but if you don't have peace, right. what good is it? So the blessings that God give us are blessings that sustain no matter what we go through. The peace. He gives us his joy. He gives us patience, his love, his kindness. He gives us peace in the midst of the storm. He gives us his blessings, the internal blessings, if you will. That stuff that keeps your soul anchored in the Lord, that you're not tossed to and fro as the wind blows. The blessings of God. James says, this person shall be blessed in his deed. What person? The one who looks into the perfect law of liberty. The one who continues in the law of liberty. The one who does not forget what he heard from the law. And the one who is a doer of the word. That person shall be blessed. So here James was telling us how to handle the word. He told us here how to handle the word. Why? Because this is where the blessings are. This is where the blessings are. This is where the blessings are. So look, look, handling the word of God. Handling the word of God. Right. We understand that uh, uh, in order to handle it correctly, James is telling us these things here. Number one, look, the first thing you got to do to handle the word correctly, you have to walk in faith. Amen. You have to walk in faith. Amen. You have to walk in faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Amen. So you have to walk even when it doesn't look like it's turning for you good. You still got to walk even when it doesn't look, it doesn't feel like it's working for your good. You have to keep walking in faith, understanding that if God is leading you, you're going to be all right. Walking and being a doer of the word, being an act performing the actions, um, some action, some action. When you do what the word says, like Simon says, Simon says, jump up, you jump up. Simon says, jump, uh, turn around, you turn around. When you do what the word says, that's where you get your blessing. The word won't lead you wrong. The word won't lead you in the wrong direction. The word will lead you through some tough times sometimes. Y'all remember Psalm 23? Yea, though I... It starts out by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. Shepherd leads. He says, I shall not want. He does all these great things for me. I'm following the Lord. I'm following the Lord. But when you get to verse 4, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows. Of, look, you're going to go through some stuff. Following the Lord doesn't mean that you're just going to always be on the, the rosy path. Following the Lord is going to take you through some stuff. Sometimes, but 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 Psalm says you don't have to be afraid when you go through those times because the Lord is with you. And if the Lord is with you, he's going to take you what? Through. He didn't take you through it to stay. He's not leading you through it to stay. James tells us in the second verse, look, that test and trials come, right? 
If you go to verse 2, you got to understand, count it all joy when you fall into temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. You go through stuff to test your faith, to try your faith, to grow your faith. It has a purpose. It grows your faith so that you can have patience. And then you're going to let patience have its perfect work that you can be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. God is trying to grow us. God is trying to make us into the image of his son, Jesus. And if Jesus had to go through some stuff, you're going to have to go through some stuff. But Jesus came out all right on the other side. Even when they put him on the cross, he still came out right on the other side. Even when they beat him all night long, he came out on the other side. Even when he hung his head and died and they laid him in that tomb, he still came out on the other side all right because he got up early Sunday morning with all power in his hand. He went through some stuff, but he came out all right on the other side. See, when he came out all right on the other side, he was all right because his father gave him all authority in heaven and on earth. He has all power because he was obedient to the word of his father. He was obedient to the will of God. And when we're obedient to the will of God, when we follow in the example, God doesn't just look at us and see us. He doesn't just see our mess. He looks at us because of our faith in Jesus and because of our faith in what God has done. God counts that as righteous. You got to walk in faith. You got to walk in faith. You got to keep going even when you can't trace God. You got to still trust him when you can't trace him. When you don't think you see those footprints, you just keep walking in the way the word tells you to walk. Even when you don't understand what the word is saying, the Holy Spirit has come to give you understanding. To make it known to you. You got to walk in faith. You got to walk in faith, walking in faith, walking in faith. If there's a way to walk in faith, there's a way not to walk in faith. If you look at James, he helps us. He says uh, um, in verse number eight. No, verse number five. See, this is walking in faith. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abraded not. And it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith, not wave, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Wavering it simply means doubt. You can't walk in faith and walk in doubt at the same time. You can't do it. You can't, you can't walk in faith and walk in doubt. Now, look, let me help somebody out. It doesn't mean that you won't have doubts. You will have doubts. Even, even the strongest one in their faith can have doubts. But you got to know what to do with your doubts. You take your doubts to the Lord. You put them on the altar. You say, Lord, I believe, just like Jairus. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Help me in the places where I don't believe. If I don't believe that you're working on my behalf, help me to know that you are. If, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I doubt that you're working for me because of, uh, because of who I am, because of the mistakes I make, help me to see past that because you see past that. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, in any area that I doubt. Walking by faith doesn't mean you won't doubt. Walking in faith means that when you do have doubt, you'll give them to the Lord. You're going to trust him in spite of. You're going to have faith in him in spite of. You can't be double-minded. You can't have faith and doubt. When you start having doubt, pray about it. But after you pray about it, you need to leave that doubt where it is. Because when you pray, you got to pray in faith. Faith is simply saying, God, I trust you. I don't trust myself. I know my heart is deceitful. That's what the word of God says. So I trust you. Even when it keeps coming into your mind, you just have to keep saying, God, I trust you. God, I tr no matter what my thoughts, God, I trust you. I understand these are my thoughts. I understand that I'm having these doubts. But God, I still trust you. And, and what does that look like? That looks like you walking towards the, the Lord in spite of what your mind says. 
even when it look look walking in faith means that even when you're having doubts you're still following the Lord even when you're still doubting that he's going to do it you're still going in the direction he told you to go in Walking in faith doesn't mean you won't have doubts. It means that you're going to keep walking and trusting God and believing that those doubts are going to fall off because you're still following God. I, I, I pray that's helping somebody because you'll doubt the process sometimes. You'll doubt that it's working for your good, but keep following God. Don't stop following him. It's when we start, when we, when we stand still, when we, when we get stuck in the place. That's when we let doubt get in the way of us. But you got to keep moving in faith. You got to keep walking in faith. You may be af afraid, but that's not of God. He hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a, 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 a power, love, and a sound mind. You got to walk in faith. Don't be double-minded. When you're double-minded, when the wind blows this way, you're going to go this way. When the wind blows that way, you're going to go that way. When somebody said, no, nah, you shouldn't do that, you should do this, you're going to follow them. You're going you're gonna to do what everybody else says except what the Lord says. The Lord said, wait on me, and I will renew your strength. When you get tired sometimes, you got to wait on the Lord. He'll renew your strength. You'll mount up on wings as eagles. You'll run and not get weary, walk and not faint if you wait on the Lord because he'll bring you through. He'll bring you out. He'll work it out. Even when somebody, look, can't nobody work it out like the Lord can. What God does is eternal. What God does will last. You got to let God work that thing out for you. Walk in faith. Don't be double-minded. But look, the second thing you got to do is you got to look intently into the word. Don't be double-minded. James says, look intently into the word. Verse, what, what does it say? Verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, looketh into the per You got to look intently into the word. Pick up the word of God and search for whatever it is that you're going through. Let God speak to you through it. Meditate on the word. Everything is in here that you need. God doesn't have to come up with something else new because it's already here. But he'll give you fresh revelations about what he's already said. He'll give you fresh revelations. You may have heard of scripture uh, 20,000 times. But we can't doubt that God will give us something fresh from that same scripture. I may get up here and preach from a scripture uh, um, several times. But you can't limit yourself to think that God can't give you something fresh out of that word. You got to look intently into the word. And see, that's important because, look, when you look intently into the word, you got to look intently into, you got to be intentional. To say, God, I'm looking at this word and I believe that your word is true and that you're working it out for my life. You got to look intently into the word. But then James says, number three, you got to continue in the word. You have to continue in the word. Verse 25, who look at them to the perfect law of liberty and continue with therein. You got to continue in it. It's not just a one-time thing. You got to do what? You have to continue in the word. Every day of your life, when God does something new for you, continue in it. Amen. Continue in it. Because when it says the perfect law of liberty, that's freedom. Amen. When you look intently into the word and and you realize the freedom that comes with what God has done, you got to continue in it. Continue in it. Don't just do it for that one time. You got to continue in the word. You have to continue in the word. Whatever God told you to do yesterday, you still need to do it and add to whatever he's telling you to for today. Continue in the word. Even when you don't feel like it, you got to continue in the word. You got to continue trusting the word. On good days, on bad days, you got to continue in the word. Because tests will come. The enemy will try to tempt you. Temptations are from the devil. They are not from God. 
and there's no temptation so great that God won't provide a way of escape. If God allows it, he knows that you can come through. You got to keep the faith. You got to think about Job. See, Job, Job, Job was unaware that God was having a conversation with him to the devil. Job minding his own business and God up in the heavenly places having a conversation saying, Satan, where you going? What you doing? Just Satan said, oh, I'm just going about looking to and fro whom I can, whom I can devour. And then God said, have you considered my servant Job? Satan said, I'm looking for somebody to mess with. I'm looking for somebody to try to destroy. And then God says... Have you considered my servant Job? God, cons God put, put Job up for the test because to, to go through all this stuff. God said, have you considered my servant Job? Maybe God is having conversations with you in heavenly places saying, have you considered my servant? When you go through stuff, you got to understand that God allowed it. But on the other end of it, if he allowed it, he's going to bring you through it. He must see something in you. So you can't hang your head down when you go through stuff. You got to look at God and say, God, you trust me. So I'm going to trust you through it. I know you got something for me. Job went through some stuff, but on the other side, he got back two times everything that he had. Because even though he had some depression, even though he had some down days, he had friends telling him all this stuff. Yet and still, he didn't curse God. Yet and still, he trusted God through all of his emotions and everything that he went through. He still trusted God. Will you trust God? Amen, amen. Will you trust God? Yeah, yeah. Even when you don't understand it, will you keep your trust in God? You got to continue in the word. The word brings life. The word brings refreshing. The word brings encouragement. The word brings fresh life. Will you continue in the word? But then James says, number four, don't forget the word that you heard. Don't forget the word that you heard. Because this is under the assumption that you're storing up word. Even on your good days, you're in the word studying. You're not waiting until life happens before getting into, into the word. You're reading the word. God has given you uh, um, revelations in the word. And then something comes along. you got to remember the word that you heard. Amen. Don't forget the word that you heard. Don't forget that the, the God who, who brought you out before, the God who made all these promises, you've been praying for God's protection. You got to believe that God will protect you, that God will keep you. You got to remember the word. But number five, the last thing, James says, be doers of the word. Whoso looketh into the perfect law, continueth therein, being not a forgetful hearer, yeah. but a doer oh, yeah. of the work. This man shall be blessed mm -hmm. in all his deeds. Church, we have to be doers Amen. of the word. Amen. We have to be doers of the word. It's not Amen. enough to hear. It's not enough to know the word of God. We must live and do the yeah. word of God. Yeah. See, the person who only hears the word, they're just deceiving themselves. If, if, if we think that we can just learn the word of God, memorize scriptures and go to church on Sundays and hear all this, the, the word, the sermons and the, listen to the gospel music and, and get all the encouragement. If we can do all this, but we deceive ourselves if we think just hearing it is enough, just feeling it is enough. We can't just go out and do like we want to do. We hear the word, we read the word and then go live how we want to live. James says you're deceiving yourself. You're fooling yourself. If you think you can go out and, 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 and sit and come to church week after week and hear the word, learn and know as much of the word as anybody, that, that, that just listening and learning, if we think that that makes us acceptable to God, we're deceiving ourselves. We're fooling ourselves. We start feeling safe and secure in the fact that I know a scripture. Because, look, we live in a society, if somebody uh, quotes a lot of scripture, we say, oh, that's, that's a good Christian right there. <laughs> somebody can get up and sing a good Christian song and have you moving all over the place. Oh, that's a good Christian right there. But that's deceiving yourself. 
Because God says, without faith it's impossible to please him. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But we hear that word hearing and we may think that that's enough. But we got to understand that faith, there are some parts to faith. Right? There are some, there are some parts to faith. We can't just hear the word because a person who acts in faith does what they hear. I could believe that too much salt is bad for me. I could believe that. The doctor said, there's eating a whole bunch of salt, right? Eating a whole bunch of unhealthy food. I could believe that. But if, if, every day I'm still going and getting this and pouring all this salt on my food and still eating the pizzas and all this other kind of stuff over and over again, do I really believe what I heard? Do I really believe it? I heard it. I know it. I understand it. But if I'm still doing it, that's not faith. Right? Faith says, and goodness knows I love ice cream. But I know ice cream ain't good for me. Too much of it. Right? But if I believe by faith that if I cut back on ice cream, that'll make my health better, I need to start cutting back on ice cream. Amen. I mean, let's say, let's say, and I don't, but let's say I eat ice cream every single day. And I believe that I need to stop eating ice cream to keep my health going. I need, if, 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 instead of seven days a week I'm eating ice cream, if I cut down to five, that, that's, that's, that's a little bit of faith. Now I'm still eating five days a week, but I'm trying to cut back. And then I get to the point where, well, I'm only eating it three days a week now. And I continue in that. I don't go back to four, four a day and five a day. I just continue. And then eventually I get down to one cup of ice cream a week. That's faith, right? That's continuing in faith. That, because I believe that that's going to. But when do you see the results? You don't see the results by believing it or knowing it. You only see the results once you start doing it. And see. With the word of God, we want to see the results as soon as we recite a scripture. By his stripes, I'm healed. Now, it doesn't mean that God won't heal you right then and there. God does what he does. But if I quote that scripture and I don't get my healing right then and there, I got to continue in the word. You got to continue in the word because your healing is going to come when it's time. The woman had an issue of blood for 12 long years, tried everything that she could. But it wasn't until she touched the hem of his garment. As Jesus was passing by that day. 12 years. But just one touch. Sometimes, see, 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 whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you believe in. Now we serve a right now God. He can do it right now. But if he doesn't do it right then and right there, will you still trust him? Will you still believe? Will you still continue believing that he's able to do it? See, that's what we have to do with some of the things that we're going through. You got to continue. Being a doer of the word means that I'm going to still have faith and I'm still going to trust God. As I, Because if I only hear it and I don't do it, I'm going to soon forget it. I'm going to forget about it. If I keep on eating that ice cream, I'm going to forget that the doctor said that ice cream bad for me. Because I'm all focused on the good, and the feel, good feeling I get from it or the, the taste of it. But you got to continue in the word. You got to be a doer of the word. If you believe that the word of God is true, then you should be doing the word of God. You got to continue to do what the word of God says. Because if you do it, that's when you get blessed. If you don't, if you just hear it and you're not doing it, you're not blessed. Amen, amen. 
A person who, who does the word is a doer of the word. And a person who lives the word of God, you will find yourself free from a lot of stuff that entangles you. You'll discover that even by going through stuff, you can have love, you can have joy, you can have peace. Even in the people still been messing with you. They've been messing with you when you were younger. They mess with you now. But the difference is because you got the peace of God, you understand, I don't have to open my mouth every time somebody say something. I don't have to tell off somebody every time they come my way. Why? Because I, I've grown to know that God is still keeping me. He's still blessing me. The more they talk, God is still doing what he's going to do in my life. Because if I keep trusting him, he's going to keep keeping me. So people of God, we got to be doers of the word. You can't just be a hearer of the word. You got to do what the word of God says. Why? Because there's life in the word of God. There's peace in the word of God. There's liberty. There's freedom in the word of God. Why? Because Christ did everything when he was here on this earth that we could possibly ever go through. And he's already worked it out. He worked out every situation, and I know he has, because God says that when he starts a good work, he's going to finish the work. He told Jeremiah, I know the plans that I have for you, and they're plans to prosper you, not plans to harm you. So God has plans for you, and he has you on his mind. So you just got to continue in. Are what God has called you to do and what he's told you to do. No matter the trial, no matter the test, no matter the, the situation, no matter what you go through, you got to keep holding on to his hand because he's working something out in your life. Because Christ got on that cross and he handled all of your situations. And the Bible tells us we were bought with a price. And I show God my gratitude. I show God how thankful I am because Christ took care of a situation that I couldn't take care of. The least I could do is live according to the word. The least I could do is live life how God wants me to live. Because if I do that, it brings life. It brings freedom. It brings blessings if I live according to the word. If I live yes. according yes. to the word, yes. Yes. no good, he won't withhold any good thing from his children. No, right. What he has for you is for you. Yes. But we got to keep following him. Amen. Amen. How do we handle the word correctly? Yes. Yes. Number one, don't be double minded. Amen. Live and walk in faith. Yeah, yeah. If God said it, yeah. not if mama said it, grandmama, uh, the preacher, anybody else, but if God said it, don't do it because I said you better make sure that what I said came from God. Because I'm human. You got to go back and study for yourself. Don't be double minded. Yes, you will have doubts. Yes, there may be times when you may fear might knock at your door, but you got to understand that that's not the place where you're going to reside. Fear, you can't come into my house because this is a house of faith. You can knock on the door, you can peep in the window, but I'm going to trust God in spite of it. Don't be double-minded because you'll be unstable. Walk in faith. Even when you can't see it, keep walking. You've been praying about it for a long time. Keep walking. Because if you can think it, God is going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. He has something great for you. You got to keep walking. Second thing, look into the word. You got to seek the word. Seek, in other words, seek God with all your heart. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. All other things will be added to you. Look into the word. Get into the word. Study the scriptures. Learn the scriptures. Hear the word. Keep doing it. But then number three, you got to continue in the word. Amen. When hard times come, don't let that stop you. Continue in the word. Continue following Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Don't forget the word that you heard. Sometimes life will hit you so hard it might knock that, try to knock that memory out. But the Holy Spirit will keep bringing it back to remembrance. Continue in the word. Don't forget the word that you heard. And finally, you got to be a doer of the word. Hearing it, that's good. Listening, that's good. Going to church, that's good. But if you don't listen to what God has so told you and start acting on it and start living it, 
then you won't live that blessed life. So that's how you handle the word of God. God has great things in store. He has great things in store for all of us. He's no respecter of persons. The same, the same thing that he expects from me, he expects from you. The same, we may have different blessings, but they're going to be just for you and just what you need. Because that's the God that we serve. Test trials, they come, you may be going through something. Still trust God. Amen. Trust God. Because he has, he has something greater. He, he's working something even greater out in our lives. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Yes. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just want to say thank you, God. God, we thank you for the gift of your word. Yes. Lord God, on this day, we, we want to make it fresh in our heart, a fresh declaration, a fresh commitment, Lord God, to trust you, Lord God, and to trust your word. God, we don't want to just hear the word. But, Lord God, help us to live the word. Help us to do what the word tells us to do, God. We understand that there may be times that we may stumble, God, but, but you won't let us fall if we continue to lean on you. Help us to lean not on our own understanding. Help us to acknowledge you in all that we do. To live the life of faith that you have given us the power to do. Help us, God. Maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice. They've been living, they've been walking, but getting a little tired sometimes. Still trusting, still holding on, but it's getting weary. God, I thank you that if we wait on you, continue in you, you'll renew our strength. When our cup seems like it's pouring out and getting empty, Lord, you'll fill our cup again. So I thank you, Lord God, for filling cups on today. God, maybe there's somebody who has been listening, Lord God, and says, I need a relationship with you. Maybe somebody has been listening online. God, I thank you that you've already done the work. And the Bible says if, if we confess with our mouths that you're Lord and believe in our hearts that, God, you raised your son Jesus from the dead, then salvation is ours. Yeah. And it says that those who are in Christ, there's now no con condemnation. Yeah. So if there's someone here, someone online who needs a relationship, give them the courage to come now. Maybe, to, they, maybe someone just needs to come back to you. Maybe someone needs a home, to, a place to, to plant their flag, a place to, to call home. Brooklyn Chapel is here with arms open wide. Yes. Lord God, whatever the need, I thank you that you have supplied yes. because you're our provider. Yes. So God, we thank you that the word has fallen on fresh soil, yes. that the word is taking roots in our heart. And Lord God, the word is growing even now. Yes. So God, we thank you. We love you. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amen. We give glory to our God and Heavenly Father. Look, there may be somebody here, maybe somebody online who, 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 who is receiving the invitation that has been extended. Um, you can come now. You can come now. You can come now. If you're online watching, you can come even now as well. Just put the number one in the chat. Let us know that you're the one that I'm talking about it, and we'll reach out to you, and we'll pray for you, and and help guide you. Amen. 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 If this is your time, you can come now. Hallelujah. We just